Hello, in this video we're going to talk about basic probability. Please use your chapter 4 probability guided notes to follow along. The big ideas for this section are to be able to find out how probabilities are determined, experimental or empirical probabilities versus theoretical probabilities, and the properties of probabilities, and then we're going to look at mutually exclusive and non-mutually exclusive events. As usual, we'll start with some vocabulary. That way we're all speaking the same language as we go further into probability. First, we have an experiment. An experiment is simply an activity whose result can be observed or recorded. Could be the time it takes for you to run around a track. It could be flipping a coin, rolling a die, anything like that is an experiment. Next, we have outcomes. Well, that's each of the possible results of your experiment. So if we go back to flipping a coin, you could get a tail, or it could land on heads. Those are the outcomes. The sample space is a set of all possible outcomes of your experiment. So our sample space S for flipping a coin would be tail or head. An event would be any subset of a sample space. If an event can be broken down further, it's called a simple event. So it's an outcome of an event that cannot be further broken down into simpler components. Event and simple event can be demonstrated using example one below. First, we have a procedure of a single birth. An example of an event in the procedure of single birth would be one girl. That's considered a simple event. There's no way that you can break it down any further. The sample space or complete list of events for the procedure, single birth, would be boy or girl. Pretty straightforward. But now let's look at the procedure of three births. Well, an example of an event in three births would be two boys and a girl. This is not considered a simple event. Why? Because there's different ways or combinations that you can come up with two boys and one girl. You could have boy, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, and girl, boy, boy. Those are all of the simple events that result in two boys and one girl. The sample space or complete list of simple events for three births would be boy, 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 three boys, boy, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl, or boy, girl, 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 boy, boy, girl, boy, girl, 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 boy, and girl, girl, girl. So there's eight different ways to have three births. Practice more with our vocabulary in example two. Suppose an experiment consists of drawing a slip of paper from a jar containing 12, 12 slips of paper, each with different months of the year written on them. We want to find the sample space S for this experiment. Well, the sample space S would simply be all of the months of the year. We have January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. Make sure in your set notation that you are using these curly brackets on either end. And it's always good to label your set. Here we have S. Example B, the event A consisting of outcomes of a month beginning with J. So we can just go through our set and mark off any time we see a J, January, and July. In June too, there are three months. So set A equals January, June, July. Let's look at example C. The event B consisting of outcomes having the name of the month with exactly four letters. Here we have June and July. So set B equals June and July. The last example says the event C consisting of outcomes having a month that begins with M or N. It's beginning with M or N are March, May, and November. So set C is March, May, November. Remember those curly brackets. Here we have some more vocabulary for determining probabilities. First, we have experimental or sometimes called empirical probability. You determine this by observing outcomes of experiments. We could find theoretical probability. That would be the outcome under ideal conditions. In theory, 
when you have outcomes in a sample space that are all equally as likely, that means that they all have the same probability. If you think about it, if you're flipping a coin, as long as the coin's not weighted, heads and tails are equally likely. So they should have the same probability. In a uniform sample space, that's a sample space where all possible outcomes are equally likely. So for the sample space of heads and tails, that's a uniform sample space. It's a 50-50 shot for either of them. The probability of heads will be one half. The probability of flipping a tails will be one half. Whereas looking here, if we have sample space D, which is weekend versus weekday, that does not represent a uniform sample space because there are more weekdays than there are weekends. If you're choosing days out of a hat, it's more likely that you'd pick a weekday. If we define weekend as simply Saturday and Sunday, there are seven days in a week, but only two of them are weekend days. So the probability of drawing a weekend day out of a hat, if we put all the days of the week in a hat, would be two sevenths. If we define weekday as Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, there are five weekdays out of the seven days of the week. So the probability of drawing a weekday out of a hat would be five sevenths. As you can see, those probabilities are not the same. So the probability of a weekend and probability of a weekday are not the same. So D is not a uniform sample space. Here are more, a few more vocabulary words. First, we have relative frequency approximation of probability. When you conduct or observe an experiment and count the number of times that an event occurs, the probability of that event is approximated as follows. The number of times that event A occurred over the total number of times the procedure repeated. As an example, say you plant 100 sunflower seeds. Those seeds are either going to germinate or grow or not germinate. The probability that that seed germinates, we would approximate based on how many of those 100 seeds germinate. So I plant 100 sunflower seeds and 83 of them grow. I would say my approximation, my relative frequency approximation would be that 83 over 100 for the seed germinating. Subjective probabilities. The probability of an event A in this case is estimated using knowledge of relevant circumstances. So I might say the probability I'm going to get my homework done tonight is 80%. I'd be making that approximation based on, you know, knowing about what my schedule is and what other things I need to do that night and combining it with my desire to get said homework done. The law of large numbers tells us as the number of trials of an experiment increases, the experimental probability of an, a particular event approaches a fixed number, the theoretical probability of that event. So the more and more times I repeat the procedure, the closer that my experimental probability is going to get to my fixed probability. For example, I know that if I flip a coin, the probability of getting ahead in theory is one half because I can either get a head or a tail and they're equally as likely. So that would be my theoretical probability. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flip a coin one time. When I flipped it, I got a tail. Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and flip a coin 10 times. I flip my coin 10 times, I get eight tails and two heads. If I were to find a relative frequency approximation of the probability in that case, I would get the probability of heads would be eight out of 10 or 0.8. That's not equal to one half. What the law of large numbers is telling me is if I flip the head more and more and more times, I'm going to get numbers for my probability that are closer to one half. In a thousand times, I might get 
550 and 450. The probability of heads in that case is 0.55. The more and more I repeat the experiment, the closer the probability of flipping a heads would be to 0.5 which is the theoretical probability of flipping a head. Now, for events with equally likely outcomes, we can say for an experiment with a non-empty finite space, sample space S with equally likely outcomes, the probability of an event would be the number of elements in A over the number of elements in S. You can see this notation here. Small n goes for the number of elements in A, but large M is your full sample space. So that's why it's the number of events in the sample space, whereas N of A is just for the event, which is a subset of the sample space. Let's look at example three. In a recent year, there were about 3 million skydiving jumps and 21 of them resulted in deaths. We want to find the probability of dying when making a skydiving jump. So the probability of dying would be the number of deaths over the total number of jumps. We get 21 over 3 million. Let's go ahead and put that in our calculator. When I put that in my calculator, I get 21 divided by 3 million equals 7e negative 6. 7e negative 6, what kind of number is that? Well, that e is your calculator's shorthand for times 10 to the negative 6. So we have 7 times 10 to the negative 6. So that means we take our 7 and we're going to move the decimal place to the left, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we'll fill in all those spaces with zero. So our probability is 21 over three million equals 0 .0000007. If I were going to round that to three decimal places, because a lot of times with probabilities we round to three decimal places, well, let's see here. One, two, three. We have a zero next to that. So that arounds to approximately zero. But because we know that it's a tiny bit greater than that, you might see zero plus written. We're going to do a related problem later on. So we want to remember not just zero plus, but our decimal answer and our fractional answer. Final example to tie everything together that we've learned so far. If set S is the integers from 1 to 25, we want to be able to find each of the following probabilities. So first is the event A that an even number is drawn. Well, from 1 to 25, there are 12 even numbers. So the probability of drawing an even number will be 12 out of the total number of numbers, 25. Example B, the event B that a number less than 10 and greater than 20 is drawn. So numbers less than 10 would be 1 to 9. Numbers greater than 20 would be 21 to 25. Hmm. So we need a number that is both less than 10 and greater than 20. Those do not intersect. So that means the sample space would be an empty set. So the probability would be zero. There are zero numbers that are in both of those categories. Next, we have event C, that a number is less than 26 is drawn. Well, all the numbers are less than 26. So that'd be 25 out of 25, or a probability of one. That's a certain event. Now we have event D, that a prime number is drawn. Prime numbers in our sample space are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 9, 13, um, 17, 19, and 23. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 out of 25 numbers are prime. Lastly, we need the probability that a number is both even and prime. Well, 2 is the only even prime, so the probability is 1 out of 25.